Welcome back to Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to calculate the surface area of a sphere. Now, if we just have a simple sphere, the surface area calculation is actually pretty easy. Okay? So recall that a sphere is really just a ball. Okay, like a basketball, a golf ball relatively is a sphere if you discount the dimples. Um, other examples would be planets or stars. These are going to approximate spheres. And the sphere has a radius, which is the distance from the center of the sphere to any point along the periphery of that sphere. And in order to calculate the surface area of the sphere, you just use this formula, 4 pi r squared, and that's it. So you need to know the radius. In our problem here, we want to find the surface area of the sphere shown to the left, assuming the diameter is 10 millimeters. Now, if our diameter is 10 millimeters, that means our radius is half of that, so 5 millimeters. And so we can just plug in an r, or radius of 5, into the surface area formula for the sphere. And unfortunately, like volume, we had 4 thirds pi r cubed. This one is also not really that intuitive of a formula, so you're better off just memorizing it. Okay. However, the surface area is 4 pi r squared, so in our example it's going to be 4 times pi times the radius squared, which is 5 squared. From here it's just basic math. 5 squared is 25 times 4 is 100 pi, and it's going to have units of square millimeters or millimeters squared. And again, the units are squared because it's a surface area. Area is always square units, volume is always cubic units. And then of course our length units are millimeters, which is why it's millimeters squared. Okay? And that's how you calculate the surface area of a sphere. And remember, the surface area of the sphere is really just this entire coating of the outside of the sphere. In other words, if you were to take a basketball and throw it in a tub of paint, and then pull it out and wait for it to dry, only the surface area of the basketball would be coated in paint. That's what we're talking about when we mean surface area. That's important because if we were to change the problem to calculating the surface area of a hemisphere, we now have two things to worry about. One, we have the, the part of the a sphere that's the top half of what we calculated here, but since we're cutting off the bottom of the sphere, we now have a bottom face, which is a circle. And so our surface area calculation becomes a little bit more complicated. So now let's calculate the surface area of the hemisphere shown to the left, assuming the diameter is now 14 centimeters. We know one thing immediately. Because the diameter is 14 centimeters, the radius is 7 centimeters because the radius has to be half of this. Now, for calculating the surface area of this hemisphere, the best way to do it is to approach it logically rather than memorizing formulas. What we want to do is determine the number of faces and what they are. Well, one face is this one more in blue. That's going to be our uh, top half of the sphere. Okay? That's one face. We'll call that the surface area of the hemisphere, the top that is. But we also have this red circle that's now on the bottom. Right? And so we now have to add on the surface area of the circle. So we're going to calculate each of those separately. The first thing I want to do is calculate that of the hemisphere, the top. Okay? And remember that for an entire sphere, the surface area is 4 pi r squared. If we ever want to calculate the surface area for the hemisphere part, it's best to treat it as a sphere at first and then just divide it by two or multiply by a half since this surface area of the hemisphere part would be half of that of the entire sphere. And hopefully that makes sense to you. So let's assume first it's the whole sphere. Well, our radius is seven centimeters because it's half the diameter. So the surface area would be four pi times seven squared. Now, 7 squared is 49 times 4 is 196 pi. This should actually be centimeters squared. Sorry about that mistake, but this is centimeters squared. That would be the surface area of the entire sphere. But since we're only talking about the top half of it, we have to multiply it by a half or divide by 2. And so the surface area of that top hemisphere part is half of 196 pi centimeters squared, or 98 pi centimeters squared. All right? So that takes care of the hemisphere. But we 
However, by cutting the sphere in half, we now have a bottom circle here that we need to account for in red. It's a circle. The area of a circle is simply pi r squared. And so our radius is 7, same radius as before. So it's pi times 7 squared. So that is 49 pi centimeters squared. And now that we've determined each section independently, we just add them. Therefore, the total surface area is the surface area of the hemisphere, 98 pi centimeters squared, plus the surface area of the circle, 49 pi centimeters squared. And our total surface area is 147 pi centimeters squared. Again, when you have a more complicated surface area problem, break it into its separate parts and then take them back together and add them. One other important note I want to mention about a hemisphere problem is that the radius that you use in the hemisphere calculation will have to be the same radius you use in the circle calculation. It wasn't just a coincidence they were both 7. They would always be the same. Now, if this part confuses you, neglect it. This is only for people that are familiar with calculus. If you're familiar with calculus and you're wanting to learn the way to get the surface area formula from the volume formula for a sphere, notice that if you take the volume formula and differentiate it with respect to r, in other words, take the derivative, the derivative of this is actually the surface area formula. Because if you do the power rule, you would multiply down by 3 and then reduce the power of r by 1 to 2. And you'd be left with 3 times 4 thirds pi r squared, or just 4 pi r squared. And it turns out that that's no coincidence that the volume, if you take its derivative, it becomes the surface area formula. Okay, So if that confused you or you don't know calculus, forget it. Other than that, just use this formula and for complicated problems, break them up. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.